Hey guys, in today's video, super excited to check out a brand new just released lens from Camland. This is a company that released the 50 millimeter f1.1 lens that I reviewed a couple of months ago, and that lens was awesome. And I was very excited when they said, hey, we wanna send you this brand new lens to review. So let's check out how it comes packaged. So here is the box that the lens comes in. As you can see, Camland logo on the front. They have various different pictures on the sides. Um, so you never really quite know what the lens will look like on the inside, but it says 28 millimeter F 1.4. So that is what is inside, or I hope so at least. So you get a uh, manual, set of manual, and then a white cleaning cloth, some silica gel, and then some nice black foam padding. This is an awesome way to package lenses, I think. And the lens. All right, this thing is heavy, wow. All right, so straight out of the packaging, around the front you have a lens hood. So this is just plastic, Camlan. The signature yellow ring, which is just unique, I like that. Camlan logo, let me take these caps off. Get a front lens cap that's gray. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Um, you have a focus ring on the front, super duper smooth. You can see that the barrel does extend a little bit when you move it, but this is buttery smooth on a different level. Um, when you compare this to some other manual lenses from making newer, um, you know, it just, this is just way, way more smooth. The aperture is at the bottom, let's see, F16 to f1.4 same thing very smooth but it takes quite a bit more effort to turn this i'd say this is just about perfect where i would like it let's see if there's anything else here you have a serial number around the back this is an aps-c size lens as you can tell it's all metal construction the the actual mount is all metal just black i don't know if that's pvd coating or painted um, no electronic connections because this is manual only. And then around the front, Camlan logo, 28 F1.4 and 52 millimeter filter thread. Let's see if you can uh, see the aperture blades. Check a look at that. Front lens element is very unique. So instead of bowing out, it actually goes concave. This is exactly the same way that the Sony 35 millimeter um, front piece of glass looks like. So you can see the reflections. There's definitely some coating material on the front. It looks purple with some hints of greens and blues. So that looks awesome. I am very excited to test this out. Here is how it looks mounted on my A6000. As you can see, the yellow ring around the front looks great. Um, that's kind of the theme with Camland lenses. Um, interestingly, when you mount it, the logo is on the bottom upside down. You can see the front lens element nice and colorful reflections that you're getting there. It's a bit long for a 28 millimeter lens, but it's not too bad. It's about twice the length of the kit lens. So about the same length actually as the 50 millimeter SEL Sony, if you have one of those. However, this lens does weigh quite a bit more than that one. It is a lot of weight in a small compact package. You can tell it is well constructed, made out of metal and glass. So that's why it weighs a bit more than other lenses. So before we jump into sample photos with this lens, let's talk about sharpness. So I went out and I compared this lens to the Makey lens that I just reviewed the 25 millimeter f1.8 side by side shot these at f8 and you could tell from the center both lenses are decently sharp however as you move closer and closer to the corners the camlen lens is clearly the sharper lens so that's a good thing so far so good then what i did is i went out and tried to see if i could tell when it started getting sharp so I took a shot of a building here at f1.4 then I stopped it down to f2, then f4, and finally f8. And as you can tell, it gradually gets better and better, but it really gets pretty sharp in the center right at f2, which is awesome. Now, if I take a look at the corners in the same pictures at f1.4, f2, f4, 
and F8. As you can tell, the corners really don't get sharper unless you stop this thing down quite a bit more, but it's good to know that at least in the center, it is decently sharp at F1.4, and if you stop it down to F2, you get a really sharp center. So I was wondering how this lens would compare to a lens that I use every day, which is the Sony 35mm F1.8. So I took two shots, both at F8 from both of these lenses, and as you can see, the sharpness is about the same, surprisingly, in the center and in the corners. And in this next shot, I took a couple of steps back to get the same perspective with the Sony 35mm. And as you can see, as I'm zooming in and taking a look at the images side by side, the sharpness is about the same. Now, there's a little bit more chromatic aberration that I noticed with the Camlan lens that you really can't avoid. I think it's pretty well controlled, but that is noticeable with this lens. So in summary, this lens is pretty dang sharp. It is better than some cheaper manual lenses that I've tested, and it is keeping up with the Sony 35, which is an excellent lens. So let's take a look at some sample photos and videos using this lens. So that is it for the sample photos and videos. A couple of things that I will mention from using this thing. It is very easy to focus. It is one of the most pleasant lenses to manually focus that I've tried in a while. The focus ring is just super smooth, very precise, accurate. It has that perfect amount of range where it's not too little, not too much. Uh, the aperture ring stayed put when you set it at f2 and I did not find myself accidentally bumping it, which is good. What surprised me most about this lens, I think it has some amazing colors that came straight out of the camera, no editing, no post-processing. It is great for skin tones and surprisingly a very good portrait lens as well. Now, a lot of those sample shots that you just saw were actually done wide open at f1.4. And what I noticed when I was shooting wide open at f1.4 is that you get a little bit of color fringing, chromatic aberration, which you should expect with something with a super fast aperture. The Sony 35 even struggles with color fringing. Sigma a 30 f1.4 even more so um, but as you stop it down it gets better and better the second thing that i noticed is that this lens has some crazy flaring um, which is not enough for me to say it's a bad lens but it's just something for you to look out for i did not use the included lens hood which I probably should have in the first place. So the big question is, should you buy this thing? And I'll answer that by saying that this lens is now in my top three manual cheap budget lenses for the A6000. Uh, it is really good. It is much better in my opinion than the 50 1.1, even though that was a really fun lens to use. It was a bit more of a challenge. This is definitely a lot more usable. So focal length is awesome because it gives you that natural eye perspective. A lot of people like the 30 millimeter focal length because when you convert it to full frame equivalent, it gives you about what the natural eye sees. So it's great for street photography and landscapes, and it does a good job at portraits as well. 
The other thing that is great about this lens is that the minimum focusing distance is relatively short. I was able to get pretty close to some flowers and get some great shots. So without question, this is a great lens. And if you are looking for something that is manual and you don't have something that covers this focal length, I'm thinking of those who don't have the Sigma 30 or the Sony 35, then definitely worth checking out. The weird thing about this is it's not technically released. Right now, this lens is on Kickstarter. I think the campaign is ending end of July, so you can still buy it or fund it through the Kickstarter campaign. I've never done a Kickstarter thing, so I don't know how that works. Camland does tell me by late July, this should be available on Amazon. So once it is available, I'll update links down below for you guys to check out. Just for fun, I just switched to the Camlan lens just to allow you guys to see what it looks like. Obviously, it's manually focused, so if I move in and out, it probably will go in and out of focus, but it's good to understand kind of how these colors will look and how the lens looks in a video setting. Now, what I noticed when I was shooting video handheld with this lens is that it is super duper shaky. Even with the A6500 and its built-in IBIS, it had terrible production value. So I would not recommend it unless you're using it static on a tripod or on a really good gimbal. For general photography, this lens is great. It is sharp, easy to use, inexpensive, has some excellent colors, and offers a lot of performance for the money. So definitely check it out. I'll post a link to the Kickstarter down below, and then as it becomes available on Amazon, I'll update that as well. Let me know what you guys thought of this lens. Let me know if you have any experience with it. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of the likes, comments, and support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Some chromatic aberration. Babe, are you joking? No. Oh, sorry, I want to vlog.